Hello, everybody. Uh, I've noticed I get a lot of hits, not necessarily subscribers, but hits on more of my uh, social issues and a lot of my fishing. Um, and I kind of like that. I would like more response on uh, my YouTube in general, but it is what it is. Uh, a lot of people, excuse me, <sighs> a lot of people um, tend to subscribe to things that are important to them. Uh, I have several things that are important to me. Uh, fishing is really a big one. Uh, defense and the tools associated are another. This video is primarily going to be for uh, discussion on the different types of fishing lines. But before I get into that, I wanted to go over a couple things. First, I don't stray very far from my beer on a Friday. It's Friday. It's time for a fucking beer. It's the cheap shit. It's free because I'm watching my parents' house. But it's Friday night. So, this is a tack light. This is an adjustable tack light. You will notice right here, it shows what it's supposed to do uh, penetration and width wise for the lens. Okay, you'll also notice that it has this knurled shroud. This is as an impact weapon. Okay, I'm not going to shove it down in front of me so you can hear it because my parents' table's fragile as fuck and they already complain about the scratches they have. But uh, sufficed for me to say it's pretty brutal. Uh, the knurled edges are actually sharpened to a point and it's scalloped. So if you dig this into somebody, they're gonna feel it. You drag it across somebody's face or kneecaps, they're gonna have a really bad day. And this thread actually comes off and you can replace the LED in it. It's a single LED, but if you look really close, it's the microchip style LED. And that's something that I never noticed before. Uh, it's a micro LED that has the LED uh, mechanism that the epoxy or whatever material they actually use, this light glass, uh, is what this little flasher is attached to. And I guess it amplifies it really bright. And that's how LED, a lot of LEDs are made now. But it has this bulbous magnifier, which is what makes it so incredibly bright. So if I turn this off, excuse me, take this off, it can pop out, but it's with difficulty. But you will see it is a magnifier. And then underneath that is the mechanism. Okay? Uh... The LED portion of things shines through this magnifier. Some of them have uh, an encasement and then a magnifier. This one just has itself. And you'll notice if you look real close, it's just that ball of uh, whatever type of material for glass they use. But this magnifier, it's a Coke bottle too. Uh, I couldn't even imagine having some eyeglasses like this. But it's really super bright. Really super bright. That's on the widest setting. It makes a really big span. But it comes into a fine point. Now the thing with this thing though is that when it comes into a fine point it shows that imprinted board where you're going. But it goes a long distance. Okay. It's really useful for shining in somebody's eyes. However this works pretty damn good. Okay. I don't leave my home without this now. It's heavy. Uh, it is fantastically well built. And uh, it only takes three triple A's. Okay? And, and they last for a while. It's uh, solid extruded aluminum. Okay? Drops right in. There's no 
uh, positive and negative reverse this and that. That is the positive when you put it in it. And when you tie this into it and roll it on, it's made the negative connection. It has a simple push button. Uh, there was a deal going on for a, a club that I'm in. And they do a lot of tactical things, actually. That this was just shipping and handling, literally. And it ended up being, I think, $9.75. You go to a tax shop and get something equivalent to this that's a name brand, you're looking at like 150 to 200 bucks. This was 10 bucks. Look for the tax clubs. They, they save a lot of money. So, that was just a little tiny segue. I know, you know, it's already five minutes in. Uh, they're invaluable tools. I went to Apache uh, about three, four weeks ago. Uh, yeah, about three weeks ago. Uh, if I'd have had this light when we were camping, I would have been a lot more sure of myself because there were coyotes and bobcats all the fuck over the place. Um, and I had my girlfriend's mag light, but mag lights only shine so bright. Their thing is that they last a long time because they hold a lot of batteries and they're heavy. This thing weighs almost as much as that mag light that I carried. And puts out about five times the candle power with less batteries. It's not meant to last as long. It's a tack light. It's meant to be brought out like this while you're bringing your firearm like this, okay? Or bonking the fuck out of somebody caveman style. But it's worth uh, getting a, a club membership for. So, enough said about that. I wanted to reiterate on uh, my white lightning rod. Uh, basically, what my white lightning rod comprises of is... And it really needs to be cleaned bad. Good God, it's dirty. Uh, a Shimano Chronic 7 0 to 1 ratio. Uh, I actually bought an upgrade in brass gears. It is super lightweight, super strong drag. Um, paid two. 49 I believe something like that I'm not exactly sure how it got as dirty as it did I'm going to have to really clean it up because it's really super dirty I think I, uh, I dropped it in the dirt the shore where I was fishing last with it I really need to give it a once over but the white lightning I give it because it's like 99% white it's got black accents it's all micro guide this is a ducket uh, Ghost, it's their economy line. And this is a seven foot medium heavy reaction strike rod, which means it's got a fast, soft tip. But it's the split grip. Okay, I like a fighting butt split grip in a lighter bait cast because I get more control over my casts. Uh, it just has that half trigger, not unlike some pistols. And I love it. It, uh, it whips casts so good. Uh, and I'm segueing into the line in a minute. Um, that's why I'm discussing this rod and reel. I do not put any heavier than 12 pound on this reel anymore. It's a 200 size, not a 300, so it's a smaller one. I wanted portability and comfort all day for the smaller gauge uh, baits like these uh, square bills. Now, this square bill that I have on here is a scatter wrap from Rapala. <laughs> See, I crossed my own line. Uh, it is a scatter wrap from Rapala. I bought it along with the equivalent from Sprite King uh, in a different line. I'm going to set this down gently. It is a tool. And um, I'll tell you, I, I went to. My parents live in Dobson Ranch, and I went to uh, Los Altos because it's literally like maybe 300 feet from my parents' house. This scatter wrap has already been annihilated in a couple areas because of how much it's gotten hit. You'll notice this bill. How it's got the scoop. It's also got a curve to it in the bottom. Okay, what this does is it pushes waves of water and vibrates this thing in such a way that it'll come like this, but then occasionally it'll dart. 
come back dark, just like a bait fish does. That's why it's called a scatter wrap. Uh, it's part of a fairly new and improved uh, segment of crankbaits known as scatter baits uh, that are designed to really, really mimic shad and other bait fish's erraticness when they're fleeing. And it looks exactly identical and tracks the exact same way no matter how slow or fast it burn my 7 to 1. I got back to my parents house at around 6.30. I had gotten all my stuff done that I needed to get done. Uh, I took this out with the rod, with the lightning, right here, okay? And I proceeded to get 10 bass inside of half of an hour. Uh, dusk time fishing is not my favorite in the world, but I'll tell you what, when it starts to become fall, morning, uh, sunrise, and dusk in the evening are prime times to get them to kick, because that's when they're really just starting to kick out in that feeding mode, and uh, the scatter wraps and uh, jerk baits of the shallow variety are really good for that time period. And I've got a, I've got a buttload of jerk baits, but these scatter wraps, I'm really getting into them. Um, it is fluorocarbon 12 pound I have on it. Most of the fluorocarbon I use is Sunline brand. I've discovered through trial and error uh, multiple spools of line that I love the way Sunline works. Um, no matter what the application is, light bait, lures, slip bobbers. Uh, full weighted on the bottom. I just for some reason am in love with fluorocarbon because of the way that it sinks as fast as it does. Uh, I even love it for my slow falling um, small, medium, and large swim baits because I want them to truly fall at the rate that they're designed to. I don't want them to fall so slow that they don't fall at all like some do and mono does that. So that is the setup that I have for the White Lightning. Uh, I have two other baitcast rods right now. I have to replace the Abu Garcia Aura Winch 2 that I have because I uh, completely uh, shipped all the teeth in my main drive gear. And the damn thing's damn near as expensive to replace as the real was on eBay, so fuck that noise, I'm not doing it. Um, it was only 85 bucks. I'm not going to cry over it. I can take it to Goodwill. Somebody will buy it. And it still works. It's just that main gear skips a lot. So, uh, you know, Goodwill, buyer beware. I will let you know what's wrong with it when I donate it. It has made it to... Now, keep in mind, it still casts really well. It just doesn't have all the gears. So... It's made it to an Akuma uh, Guide Select Swim Bait 7 foot 11 uh, triple extra heavy moderate tip. It has a pretty fair amount of load. I can get up to 8 ounce lures on it. The comfort range is uh, 2 to 4. But it will go up that high. I prefer not to because even though I know the rod is strong and loads very nicely, I just don't want to go beyond a certain capacity for it. When I replace the reel, it will probably be one of the only two that I pick. The Revo winch, which, well, there's a, there's a few that I'm looking at. The Revo winch is one of them. The 13 Fishing Concept 3A which is a swim bait specific reel and severely overbuilt by the way. I may even get a Cronark 300, but they're expensive as hell. Uh, I will tell you that the Shimano Cronark and the other line, when I got it in 2014, it had just come out with the X-Ship, which was where the bearings supported on both sides of the reel. One of the uh, linchpins of a bait cast is a lot of them don't have double sided uh, support. They just sit in a uh, ledge with their uh, one side of their spool uh, pin. 
and it's inherently uh, a weak point. Not that anybody ever really goes out of their way to destroy something like that, but it can happen. So uh, Shimano came out with the X-Ship, and a lot of people are following suit in that same manner. The other one I've considered for that rod is a loose speed spool in a 300 size. I don't like the aluminum ones like the Cardiff and you know these other ones that are in the, the 1 to 500 range. I paid 85 for my SC600 size that's on my other rod I'm going to tell you about in a second. So a 300 size uh, speed spool would do just fine for me. They cast like a dream. They're very finely tuned though. You have to be careful with the lower weight adjustment because if you go too high, the bearings bind down. But if you don't bind them and you get in, in that zone, so to speak, that you weren't, they cast like a bullet, man. Uh, the 600 that I have is on a Tackle Industries 7 foot, uh, triple extra heavy, mega heavy, and it's basically a nine foot four uh, X standard heavy uh, surf rod. It's cut down to seven foot flat and re-rated because they've taken some of that parabolic bend out of it, and it's rated for up to 150 pound mono. I mean, the thing is just like holy shit balls. Uh, a good two and a half feet of it alone is handle. It's built for battle. It truly is. If it was a nine foot, which is actually fairly short for a surf rod, and it's like it is now with a couple feet cut out, I can't even tell you. I got a huge channel cat out at uh, Freestone Park in Gilbert here in Arizona um, off of a live bluegill. And, I mean, it pulled, but it was fairly effortless. And that 600's drag is phenomenal. My God, it's such a good reel. For an economy line reel, it is so freaking awesome. For like no money. So, my likelihood is that I'll probably end up getting the 300 size for my other rod. But that's why I'm getting into uh, the lines in a minute. Uh, my 7 foot 11 Okuma with the Aura Winch, I have 20 pound. Uh, Berkeley trialing big game monofilament right now because the spool was free from my dad when we went to our Mexico trip uh, to El Salto. So I didn't really bark at it. He said, I'm not going to use the line unless I go there again. And the fat chance of that, I'm getting old. So now I have it. And I like Berkeley's big game mono because it's tough. Uh, the line handling is not that good, but on a bait cast, you really don't care. If you want to have Berkeley Big Game spinning line, you can get it, but it's a different animal altogether. I prefer this cheap stuff to throw on my uh, bait casts and just abuse and replace whenever I need it. So, I had 30 pound version of that on my musky rod, the Tackle Industries one, on the 300, and uh, I got into enough channels and flatheads that I needed to replace it, and I had also been experimenting through eBay with Cast King brand, uh, which makes the ultralight reel that I have for my custom uh, Southwest Custom Rods reel, excuse me, rod, uh, my 7 foot ultralight. It's uh, a Mela 2 from Cast King. I liked the reel, I wanted to test their lines. Well, their flora coat is a mono line that's fluorocarbon coated. A little bit in between, but it works pretty good. And the line management's not bad. I really can't fault them, especially considering how inexpensive the line is. I got like, I think, a thousand yards for eight bucks. I mean, come the fuck on. Uh, the other mono that I used for a long time before I started really liking fluorocarbon I did a lot of bobber fishing at ASU Research Parks uh, for panfish in the four pound uh, line range. A lot of slip bobber activity. Four pound plain brown colored 
Excel line from Bass Pro. 1500 yards for eight bucks. It lasted me for two and a half years. Uh, that line just, it, it's so unbelievably strong for its line rating. I mean, I pulled 12, 13, 14 pound uh, carp and catfish out with an ultralight seven foot rod with a full parabolic bend and almost no backbone with that line and was able to cast the next second without being so stretched out that I couldn't use it. So uh, I will always endorse Excel. It's just not my cup of tea now. Uh, I've, I can't say that I'm upgrading. I am side grading to what specifically works for me. So the main lines that I use are sun lines uh, for carbon. Now, I did get some uh, Isor um, copolymer, which is kind of a double polymered uh, mixture in a monofilament. It has exceptional strength. I mean, exceptional strength. Uh, for its rating better than Excel's. I got a 1700 foot spool at Bass Pro for 15 bucks out the door. Now, I live two miles from Bass Pro, but I use eBay most. The only reason I went there is because I had no option. I had to reline uh, my medium heavy, medium uh, 2500 size. Uh, Pen Fierce 2 reel in 8 pound, which is what I use anything from medium all the way through medium heavy applications for what, the type of fish I'm going for, and it's mostly live bait. And I had just gotten an $18 uh, Master Custom Rod 7 foot medium from eBay, and I needed to put line on it, and I didn't have any more 8 pound in uh, sunlight. I'm pleasantly impressed. I'll probably stick with it for the 8 pound until that roll is gone. But my uh, 4 pound that I have right now, because it was, I could not resist the uh, cost, it was 25 bucks for 3,000 yards of AN40 silver thread 4 pound. I, I couldn't ignore it. I mean, you went around a budget. Good God. It's not bad, but once it cores, and if anybody knows what I mean by core, once spinning reel line cores, it's useless. Once silver thread cores, it's fucked. It looks like floss. But up until that point, it's strong as shit, and it casts like a bullet. So I'm giving it a chance. I mean, I got a lot of yards. So my six pound line that I've had, I tried McCoy with my girlfriend's uh, reel. It really didn't work very well. I know McCoy's strong line. It works really well. A lot of crappie fishermen use it. I really don't like it. Uh, so I got more SC Sniper and SC Basic. And I have two uh, six pound rolls of that. Uh, I actually relined my six pound line reel with the last of my SC Sniper fluorocarbon, which was literally just 20 yards shy of filling my reel before it went out. It was actually, it looked like nothing was there. That's how clear this line is. So, I have copolymer, 8 pound, on my medium, medium heavy. I have 6 pound SC Sniper fluorocarbon on my 6, and I have the silver 40 right now on my 4 pound. I'm going to run through all that footage at yardage before I get more line because I fish all the time and my girlfriend goes with me a fair amount but what I wanted meat and potatoes to get to is that my favorite type of line is fluorocarbon bar none for two simple reasons the knot strength is fucking phenomenal it's retarded as long as you lubricate it when you're making it or not. If you don't, you'll burn it up, it'll pop right away. It's one of the tendencies of fluorocarbon. But it doesn't bother me because I spit the hell out of it and I pull it tight. Now, with the knots I tie, I pull it tight enough that I can tighten it, but I let 
fish tighten it the rest of the way because I use simple cinch knots uh, a lot and they cinch down all the way till they're done after a couple fish. I also like it because it sinks quickly. It has really good um, lack of line memory for an extended period of time before it starts to get it. And it also slips through slip bobbers quick as lightning. So for less weight on a setup, you'll go just as quick. And it's incredibly strong for break strength comparison. So eventually when I get rid of all those lines, I will be using fluorocarbon only because of a couple chief reasons. I either use a seven aught uh, Per the demon uh, bait hook, the demon circle, or uh, the number one through three aught in the same, and I use gamma gamakatsu red sickle bait hooks as well in size one, because of some of the places I go to, I use everything from the little one inch bluegills all the way up to four. And that's why I bring at least two to three rods with me. And uh, they go all the way up the line classes. I'm kind of in the middle of the road with my line classes now. Because for a while it was four pound, eight pound, and then 12 pound. But a couple of my rods were broken by a kid that ran across them. So I have lighter rods now. And I have to compensate for that line wise. But... That's kind of an explanation of why I like uh, fluorocarbon and why it's my major choice. Now, I'm not getting on monofilament. Like I said, Excel from Bass Pro for a 1,500-foot spool 4-pound, it lasted forever. I mean, it lasted for shoot, probably six months. Uh, and I was continual day to day to day to day to day to fishing every single day. And it still worked. So... It's a testimony. If you like monofilament, by all means, get Excel. It is cheap and it works. And you can get it just as cheap, if not cheaper, on eBay. Uh, I try not to go in the stores these days to get pretty much anything. In fact, I have to re-up on my sickle hooks in the red ones. And uh, up a couple other different hooks. Oh, yeah, excuse me. And I also have to get more slip bobbers. So, despite having bills, I have things to get because I still fish no matter what. But, um, yeah, I'm fluorocarbon all the way. Once I get all my line used, it's going to only be fluorocarbon. In fact, I may get a couple spools just so I can put the other ones in the drawer and keep them just in case. And switch to fluorocarbon. Yeah, it just depends. It depends on how I feel. I, I know the Azor copolymer works really good. Uh... And the silver 44 pounds a great line for mono. So, uh, I'll see how it goes in the future. But I just wanted to kind of give more of a concept of why I use the lines that I do.